Hello, hello, Sir David the Bard. I'm coming to you from the Heartbreak Hotel. No, not the Hotel California, the Heartbreak Hotel. I want to do a video that um, I guess is, is for me. It helps you fine, but it, it's for me. This time of the year, Christmas, um, uh, I've only had two or three Christmases uh, since I became an atheist. And uh, I love the singing, and I love the Christmas tree, and and the things that are attributed to uh, Christ and Buddha and uh, Mohammed of uh, getting along with people, don't lie, don't steal, don't screw the pigs, you know, those things I all agree with. Here's what I find at this time of the year, and it's the first time of the year in my lifetime that I'm not sad, that I'm not unhappy, that I'm going, oh me, life is terrible. I know many of you uh, that view me are sick, you're disabled, you're divorced, you're poor, you have legitimate heartbreaks in your life. And it's tough this time of the year. You're looking at a man who's gone through, you know, 60 Christmases, sad and suicidal, most of those Christmases. Uh, I've got a lot of videos out. If you follow me, you know I've tried to kill myself five times. And it's just not one of those things I do well. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> anyway, um... I have empathy for the pain, psychological and physical. I've had quad bypass surgery. Uh, don't tell me anything about pain. Don't tell me anything about pain. I've had quad bypass surgery. They cut me open with a saw, spread my ribs, fixed my heart, put it all back together, sent me home, and I was married to Oxycontin for almost a year. Hurt to breathe. Hurt to think. Hurt. And I don't mean like a splinter. I mean pain. Anyway, don't feel bad for me. I feel good now. I don't have any pain. And uh, I still don't have a heart, <laughs> according to my ex-wives. But, you know, who listens to them? I never did. That's why they're ex. Here's what I'm trying to say. If you're suffering and you're in pain in this damn season of holidays, uh, it will worsen it. It does. It makes it worse. If you've just uh, lost a mate, uh, a spouse, or a, uh, an important person, mother, father. I met a lady. I'm not going to mention who she is. I was in the uh, bank, and I don't know what it is about the bar. People just spill things to me uh, because I guess I keep things confidential. They feel that. A lot of them don't even know me, but they just want to talk. I listen. That's how I learn. You want to learn? Listen. She said, well, she said, uh, this time of the year is a little hard for me. And I said, okay, um, why? And she said, well... I don't tell people these things because they're personal. But see, this time of the year, the pain is so hard and so sharp and so uh, all-encompassing. She said, well, Bard, four of my brothers and sisters died. I said, oh my God, how did that happen? She said, well, they have a very rare uh, blood disease. Uh, it's like Evans. It's in the family of Evans, and the prognosis are very, very poor for those uh, blood diseases. I said, "Well, that's terrible." He said, "Yeah, we, in our family, we've inherited um, that gene, and four of them died within uh, four years." Said, well, that's got to be really hard. She said, "Yeah, and uh, it killed both of my parents too." I said, "Shit, you've lost six people." Yeah, yeah. And I said, well, are you going to get it? She said, no, I'm adopted. I was a 45-year, 40-year-old woman, attractive gal. I said, you're adopted so you don't have the same bloodline. She says, that's right. But it hurts just as bad because they're my family. It's just that I happen to have different blood. And now my husband, he's going to die. 
I didn't think I was going to get emotional about this. But I am a little bit. That's a lot of pain. That's a lot of suffering. She'll have no family. No family. The family dies when she dies. When she's adopted. I felt bad. I feel bad right now that this uh, young lady has had to suffer that much pain and she's not even halfway through life. I've suffered with divorce. Those of you out there that are fighting the hell out of your spouse trying to get to visit the kids, try to buy the damn kids a Christmas present and have a tree and lights and you know the traditional things that Americans all cherish and uh, you know your spouse goes uh, you can't visit your child what, the only thing you can do is go back to court and, and you don't have time for that they're just mean bitches and some mean husbands uh, I when I had custody of my kids and my ex wanted to visit them I screwed with her I have to admit it it's one way to get back at them but it makes suffering of the children and pain of the, of the spouses and the mothers and fathers. Been there folks, done that. That's damn hard. You sit at home and you watch Disney or a movie and you don't have a spouse and no kids or I've been a single mom. I had a sex change. Now I'm just screwing with you. I got custody of my kids, five of them. Five of them. One was eight months old. Don't tell me about being the mother of, uh, of um, poverty and divorce. I had to take care of those kids. I had to work. I had to go do all the school uh, teaching at night and the homework, clean the house, cook the damn dinner. Don't tell me how hard it is to be a single mom. It is the hardest job I have ever had. I worked construction. I worked in the middle of the night. I've worked and worked, but I have never worked as hard as a single mom. That's a bitch. You do all you can for your kids. You want them to have clothes and, and happy things and toys under the tree. You don't have any money. I didn't have any money. All I had were credit cards and debt. Collectors calling on the phone. Kids don't understand that. They want to go play with daddy or they want to go play with mommy because they have extra toys for them. And most of my toys and things were from thrift shops, desert news, garage sales. Man, I didn't think this would trigger me emotionally. It's been so long ago. But you know, some of the pain just doesn't go away. We forget a little bit, but when it comes up and the triggers are there, I wanted my kids to have the best. I work day and night. I work two jobs. A lot of you single parents are working two jobs. Can't sleep, can't get up. Kids, I, I remember the, the day uh, I had my uh, little one, uh, Rachel, I had this, a terrible temperature, terrible temperature. Middle of the night I had to take her to the hospital. I'm scared to death because I had to leave other kids at home. I can't drag them all into the the uh, emergency room in the middle of the night. She had a bladder infection. Okay, so they gave her some penicillin, took her home, laid her in bed. Six o'clock in the morning, the alarm goes off. It's time for me to go to work. It's time for me to go to work so I can pay for that little girl's penicillin. And I did. And I did, and I did, and I did. When I went to the Mormon church to ask for help, because I was a single father, they helped single mothers. When I went to the Mormon church, Relief Society president, to ask for some babysitting help and some you know, things that most single moms need, she said, hell no. If you're having trouble, give the kids back to their mom. Those are the kids and the families 
that don't and won't talk to me because I'm not a member of their church anymore. Those were the people that gave me the quad bypass surgery. Those are the people that have put stress in my life. The ones that I work for day and night, weekends, holidays, my birthday. They're the ones that I took care of medically, dental, uh, dentally, uh, braces. Monica had braces, several thousand dollars. See, the cult makes them love their religion and their underwear garments more than their father. So, I come to this video not as a, a pup, not as a pup. Been there, folks, <clears throat> done that. Seen the inside of a barrel of a gun. Took. Jesus. Fifteen hundred units of insulin. Kill myself. He just put me in the hospital. His life was so miserable. Gas. Exhaust out of the car. Coming in through the window and I'm laying there with a the sheet on me watching Star Trek. Didn't work either. I know pain and I know suffering, but you know what else I know? We can beat it. We can beat it. I think you saw Jack Jackson, Michael, beat it? And, oh, shit. I don't know. I thought I saw him, but you know, these days I'm seeing a lot of things that aren't there anymore. We can beat it. Screw our families. Screw people who hate us. Screw people. I'm going to make an announcement right here. I thought I'd wait a while, but I'm going to make an announcement. I'm nine days away from a million hits. You get about 1,500 hits a day, 13, 15. As soon as that computer shows that a million people have listened to me for some reason, I don't know why, I'm going to pull my pants down. And I'm going to put my ass up to that camera and I'm going to tell my Mormon friends and family to kiss my ass. They said I was mentally ill. Well, that's the only thing they've ever said that's truthful. <laughs> You'll never be anything. Well, am I something? I don't know. I'm a happy person, finally. They said you'll never amount to anything. No one wants to hear you. No one wants to listen to you. But you know what? A million hits. I don't know. That doesn't make me famous, but it makes me think, gee, I'm not the worthless piece of shit that they said I was. I'm a pretty decent person. Some people like me. Some people think I'm funny. Well, you see me undress. You'll think I'm funny. I've been there. And I can bring those feelings up. See, bipolar people, we don't have memories like normal people. We're not normal. The brain operates very differently than normal people. When I brought up those triggers, I relive them. I don't remember them the emotion and the pain I can feel again. I don't like that. But you know what? I can't have everything I like. I don't like to be divorced five times and have six wives. I don't like to have half of my children loving their underpants more than their father. I don't like that. And it causes pain. But you know what? I'm telling you. You and I can deal with it. It's, it's tough when we look out there and it's raining and it's snowing and Christmas is here and the lights are all over the place and kids are running and presents. You know, Allison was doing little presents. She was wrapping them up last night. And uh, Christmas has been a miserable time in my whole life. My whole life has been miserable. Now that I'm out of the cult, now that I'm adjusting a little bit to the real world, it's better. Not perfect, but it's better. So I'm speaking to you. If you're feeling suicidal, been there. Done that. Now let me tell you something. We all have a right to die. 
I'm not against suicide. I'm not against suicide. Uh, when people are having more pain than they can handle, emotionally or physically, hell, who are we to say, oh, you suffer, you'll get better. Some do, some don't. But I'll tell you this. This entire program with a million hits and all the, you know, pushing up onto 2,000 videos or 2,000 subscribers, I can't remember, and it doesn't matter. But what I'm saying to you is this all started after my last suicide attempt. Have I helped anybody? A few people say yes. Do some people watch me? Yeah, some people do. So this wouldn't have been there, would it? If I had passed away and actually got dead. I wouldn't have seen Allison wrapping those presents last night. Abigail had no driver's license, no job. She came in to me this morning and said, Dad, is it okay if I drive an hour away? Am I old enough and big enough? I said, Honey, you got your own car. You pay for your own insurance. You've driven 6,000 miles with no tickets and no accidents. Yes. Can I take my sister? Yes. I trust you to take your sister. That moment would have never happened. It would have never happened if I had died on my insulin overdose. Does it make up for the pain? A little bit. Does the pain ever go away? No. Some things are lifetime damage. You can put band-aids on them, you can put all kinds of healing wounds and what on the wounds, but the truth is, emotionally, when we're damaged, we pretty much stay damaged. It gets a little easier with age, a little easier with another family starting over again. But I'm going to tell you something from my heart. And I guess I've changed. Pushing 70, still learning, still learning. The only way I would approve of a suicide is such extreme emotional and physical pain that is chronic. It's not going to go away. Every one of us should probably just move on. But if it's temporary stuff like a divorce, if it's temporary stuff like a bankruptcy, if it's temporary stuff like not being able to see your children in custody, they grow up. If it's temporary, I say now, no. Talk to someone. Call me up. Call up your best friend. Get your damn video show going. Talk to yourself. This is where this show came from. I was in such pain, I didn't have anyone to talk to. Now I talk to almost 2,000 people every video. Subscribers. Do something. Get yourself in a place where you're around positive people. People who think you're good looking, smart, intelligent. I don't care what it is, but you get rid of the toxic people in your damn life because you're going nowhere. I went nowhere. Hanging around Mormons, oh my God. Hanging around Mormons, I went nowhere. As soon as I got out of that damn cult, I got a few friends. Well, a little friend. Not, well, he's not a midget, but you know, I see him a couple times a year. When I was a Mormon, I had no friends. None. A lot of associates, but no friends. You can do it. You can do it. I was in the damn gutter. I was addicted to prescription drugs. I didn't know I was bipolar till I was 48. After one suicide attempt, the doctor took me over to the psychiatrist. They diagnosed me. I always wondered why I acted a little bit outside the box. <laughs> a little bit outside the box. It's like Jesus coming to the, the world and holding his hands out. Well, I'm a little outside the box. Everyone knew I was outside the box. I've dealt with that damn bipolar. It took me ten years to get the medications right. I sit right over here. Ten medications a day to hold me 
somewhat in the middle. Yeah, I'm still out of the box, but <laughs> you should have seen before I was naked out of the box. Now at least I dress. I got out of it, and you can get out of it too. I don't give a shit what your sickness or illness is. I have trouble right now with balance. I have trouble right now with, uh, you know, the uh, sugar, the high sugars in, in my um, diabetes. You know, I paid $4,000 for a damn pump to pump diabetic uh, insulin to me all day long. God, I'm like a walking fucking hospital. But you know what? It's still worth it because of you people. You make me stay alive. And if I can say anything that helps a divorced mom on this Christmas Eve, it's the 24th night, anything to you that have called me in wheelchairs, anything to those of you who have, have chronic illness and disease, I've been there. I've done it. It's going to happen again. I'm going to pass on here. I may pass out before I pass on. But let me give you my heart. You can make it. I don't care. I don't care what the disabilities are. Mental, physical, we all carry crosses. Most of them have our children's name on them. But anyway, we all carry a cross. I'm no better and you're no better than anybody else. If I can crawl down that staircase holding on to two kangaroos, I can still get out and do something for somebody. I can still get out and do something for somebody. And one of the, one of the greatest pieces of advice you'll ever hear from the Bard is that if you want a good life, you find something every day to help somebody else. A handshake, a smile, a cookie, Give it to the damn birds. But you make this world a better place because you were here. And this world has tried to eat you alive. Make them choke on you and spit you back out like Jonah and the whale. He was up on the beach and all the, the surfers in California said, What the hell? Where'd you come from? You know, I was in the whale. Hell, how'd you get in the whale? You can make it. You can do it. These hours of Christmas the trees and the music and the children and everybody on TV having the perfect family. Don't you let that weigh you down. You have Christmas when you want to have Christmas. Be bipolar. This calendar doesn't tell me when to live, how to live, when I have a present, when I don't. Screw the world. You're important. You're important. Your world is more important than all this shit that's going on. Try to get a job. Try to find new medications. Try to find new friends. Try to be friendly. Try to be friendly. I went to McDonald's the other day and the young kid there, it, the funniest guy in the world, he's funnier than the bard, you know, and I said this is a, uh, uh, Joseph Smith and this is my 14 year old wife and Abigail was sitting right beside me, just dying, just dying. He goes, well, do you have the other 30 wives and vans behind you? I go, no. Well, yeah, maybe I do. I want 30 more hamburgers. <laughs> so I got to the front window, and uh, he said, well, you're going to have to pull forward there, and uh, you're going to have to wait. I said, well, I thought this was a fast food place. And he said, well, it is. I said, well, it's not that fast. If I have to go up there and wait, make it worth my while, will you? <laughs> I go up and wait. He comes out laughing his ass off. Beautiful young man. And he said, You got the big fries, not the little ones, and they're full this time. I <laughs> go, You bastard. You're a wonderful person. The world is a better place because you're here. Simple stuff, folks. Go out. I remember laying in that bed, figuratively. Not this bed, but another bed. I remember laying in the bed. I couldn't even get out from under the damn covers. I wouldn't eat. I'd barely go to the bathroom. My life was so miserable, I didn't want to get up. I would wake up in the morning and I'd go, What the hell? I lived another day. God, I wish I had died. 
a lot of other people did too, called Five Ex-Wives. I couldn't find the right girl. I thought maybe there's something wrong with me. There wasn't. I was perfect. See, I was a Mormon. I was perfect. The the church is true. It's the people. See, marriage is a great thing, but you know they weren't. <laughs> anyway, let me leave with you. I'm going to bless myself. <laughs> David the Bard, having the power of the holy Melchizedek priesthood taken away from me. I anoint your head with this holy coke <laughs> and give you a blessing. And the blessing I give you is that you will pass on to the world your good nature. You will pass on to the world humor. You will pass on to the wor world strength. Helping people develop their own power their own inner self. I bless you that you may have words of wisdom, that you may be able to hear not with your ears, but with your heart. I bless you that you will be a strength and an encouragement to those who suffer and suffer that you will find a way to lighten their hearts and help them to be happy and have joy in their lives and I pronounce this blessing upon you it can't be in the name of Jesus Christ because you're an atheist. But if there is a God, amen. You hang in there. You make this a good Christmas in here. Don't let this world, don't let this world tell you how you're going to feel. You find something simple and focus on it. A good thing in your life. A good marriage a good child. I have a lot of asshole kids. But I got a couple of little gals now that will come in. Some other children. Thanks, Dad. Thanks, Dad. You find something good about yourself and then you hang on to it. And you make it grow and grow like a flower. And when I get that million hits, I'm going to put my ass in that camera to show all the people who said I was a failure. All the people who said I was mentally ill. All the people who said that it was better if I was dead. Kiss my ass. Merry Christmas to my ex-family. This bar's gone. <laughs>